Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a tutorial on learning how to mix a cappellas in with stuff, with house music. Exactly the same philosophy if you're mixing, let's say, with hip hop or with techno, with trance. The major difference is the tempo, the speed, the BPM. For example, if it's hip hop, it's going to be a lot lower. If it's the likes of, say, fast techno, of course, the BPM is going to be a lot faster. So, a cappellas. A cappellas are, if you imagine you take a track and you rip the track apart, you have beat, bass line, synth, vocals, etc. The vocals is almost like the a cappella, but the term for a cappella is when we take everything else away and we're left with the, the vocals, that's it, nothing else. So it's pretty easy, sort of, to put an a cappella over a track. So long as it's in time, it'll sound very good. But for a lot of people, it's very difficult to count the timing in, a, in an a cappella because there isn't any beat, because the beat has been taken away. So first of all, how do you count time in an a cappella? Secondly, how do you then add the a cappella to a track? And thirdly, which is what we'll be doing in this tutorial, is adding three a cappellas to a track, chopping them up and making them sound completely different. If you think about it, if I say, for example, said, hello, my name is Jonathan, and that was in one a cappella, and then in another one, let's say a completely different song, hello, my name is Daphne. Well, I could, if I wanted to, I could say, hello, my name is, from the one a cappella, and then quickly bung in Daphne. So, hello, my name is Daphne. Hello, my name is Jonathan. Hello, my name is Daphne. So it would be, hello, my name is Jonathan, from that entire a cappella. I play all of that a cappella, and then where the Jonathan comes in, I bring in the Daphne. So first of all, how would you do that? Well, if you can, uh, and most kit these days, whether it be a CD player or a PC program, you will be able to set cue points. So of course, all you'll do is you'll set a cue point just before the word Daphne. So, hello, my name is Jonathan, played all the way through. Hello, my name is, volume down, cue point, Daphne. Think about it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do near enough that. Also, what I'm going to do is mix in one a cappella that is a completely different time signature. So the three I've got, what, what we'll do is, if we put the camera there, then we should have a good idea of, let me have a look, if I, I need to put it so it's not in the way as well. If I put it there, like so. Now the track I'm going to be using <coughs> is Badman Rhythm. So what I'll do, I will play that, and I'm going to just form like a loop. Okay, so we've, we've got a loop going. Got three acapellas. We've got Awesome Three Don't Go. We've got Danny Tanglia, Music Is The Answer. And we've got Two In A Room, Wiggle It Just A Little Bit. This one here, by the way, the tune here, Bad Man Rhythm. Now, pitch, at the moment, if we put that in the center point and I play the Wiggle It, let's listen and see what happens, more so let's listen at the, at, at the timing, okay? Now straight away, you can hear it's completely off time. So first of all, what we're going to do, and this particular tutorial, we're gonna do loads of stuff, so you may be able to take tiny tips, or lots of tips, or even just small tip from this tutorial. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play this a cappella, two in a room, wiggle it with no beat, and I'm going to count time. I'm going to count the bars, count the beats in this a cappella, and hopefully you'll be able to work out the timing as well. What I want you to do, I want you to count the timing as well with me, and then I'm going to stop counting. You should carry on counting and then I'm going to then carry on counting halfway through and let's see if our counting is at the same time signature. If it is, it means you've done it correctly. So, 
One, two, three, four. 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 Carry on. Two, three, four. One, two. Just a little bit as it grew. Wiggling just a little bit. I want to see you wiggling just a little bit as it grew. Wiggling. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. One, one, two, three, four. Now, if your timing and the the numbers you were saying were in time with mine, then you were t you were counting in the correct time signature. So you'll notice that where the pitch was in the center point, it was completely off time. It was going too fast, which means we're going to have to reduce the pitch. Now, if we chop up the a cappella and we chop it up relatively quickly, there's probably no need to mess around with the pitch that much because if we're only using a tiny segment of this a cappella over that track, even though it may slowly or very a, a, a tiny amount, it may tight start again, it might only a tiny amount go offbeat because we're only using a tiny bit. Of the acapella it won't matter if I was to use a lot of this acapella over that beat I would need to make sure I slowed this one down so we're gonna do just that now let's press play Still a bit too fast. Notice I turn the platter anti clockwise and then reduce the pitch. I did that because I wanted first for the time of the a cappella to catch up or catch down, as the case may be. But then I had to move the pitch down as well. If I'd have only moved the platter, it would have, to begin with, caught up and kept up in time. It would have stayed in time, but it would have slowly gone out of time again because I still would have needed to move the pitch down. You know, I can move the platter as much as I want and it will go slower and slower and slower. Or it will carry on going slower, should I say. But as soon as I stopped doing that, it would just get back up to its original speed. I would have had to move, which I did, the pitch down for it to stay at the slower speed I wanted it to go. Therefore, keeping in time with the track. So that's the one tune. All right. So if we look at where the pitch is, it's roughly sort of there on the pitch. For the people who um, maybe are partially sighted, I would say it's around about a third of the way down from the center point on the player. So that's the tuna room a cappella. What we'll do now, I'll set it to the center point and we'll try the Danny Tanglia. No, that's awesome three. So that's the dancing and prancing. So play the track again. Here we go. Right, opposite now, this one is too slow. So I'm going to speed it up to about, we'll try it there, and we'll start all over again. Right, I'm gonna. <clears throat> I did the opposite there. I had to speed this one up. So I did a couple of things. I, as you saw, I, if, or if you didn't see, should I say, I had to move the outside of the platter clockwise to speed it up, and then increase the pitch. 
Now I've done near enough the opposite. I've moved the pitch roughly about a third of the way towards me from the centre point, which is increasing the speed. So, right, uh, as well, let me just uh, do that. I just want to talk a little bit about a cappellas because sometimes if you listen to rap artists, when they rap, so sometimes or maybe, I don't know, it could be like 10%, 20 100%, I don't know. No, it's probably not, not, probably not 100%, but, excuse me, sometimes when they rap, they don't rap exactly <clears throat> in time. It's very laid back and chilled out kind of rapping. And while they're sort of, they're doing this really, oh, I was sitting on the street, I was tapping my feet, looking for some food to eat because I've got smelly feet. <clears throat> um, they, <laughs> <laughs> what it is, is quite often you need to find the words that are on time. Now, with that particular a cappella from Danny Tanglia, you know, dancing and prancing, if you hit the, hit the, hit the floor. So there were words that were hit right bang on the beat, but there were others that were slightly off. Now, these are the sorts of a cappellas that are very difficult for some people to mix because it's very difficult to find the time signature, but it is in there, because if it wasn't, then that, you know, that acapella is, was taken away from the original track, so there has to be a time signature in there somewhere. Right, so that's that one. Right, if we uh, go back over here, and yeah, what I will say as well, is in March of this year, and we're at the moment, because people watch these videos all the time, we're in 2013. In March of this year, I'm going to be working in Switzerland again, teaching. So I will put a link in the description if you're interested in having some lessons in Switzerland. And it's not just the Swiss, anyone from Germany, France, or anything like that. Go and participate. Uh, just get involved if you want to. It's always good fun, and we have a laugh, believe me. Right, so that is... Uh, where are we now? That's Danny Tanglia. Then the other one, which is this one, is Awesome 3. So if we listen, straight away, there is something about the I cannot bear. And the, the major part about that is that it doesn't start on the count of one. So if I count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, I cannot bear to see. So it's one, I cannot bear. So that in itself is slightly off-putting and I'll demonstrate that by pressing it on the one and then pressing it after the one and you'll see exactly what I mean about the time signature with this a cappella. So let's press play on the, the, um, the beat again. So first of all, I'll press it in time on the count of one. Right, I'm going to stop that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to count. I'm going to press play on C, which is the first cue point, and I'm going to count the correct time signature over this a cappella. Right, so we've we've sussed out the time signature. What we need to do now is make sure that if we do want to play this entire a cappella, we know roughly where it should be on the pitch. So let's press play again on, on the tune. This time, we'll play it in time. Okay, so what have we done? We have, we've looped a track, we've got three a cappellas, we've got, we've set three cue points, we've got this one. I cannot bear to see you dancing. 
Now, again, what I've tried to do, I've tried to choose three acapellas that, that I can do a bit of, I, I can have a bit of fun with. I cannot bear to see you dance. I cannot bear to see you wiggle it. Think about it. This is where the fun comes in. But also, this is where you having a lot of practice and having some fun with it. All right, there is an element of making mistakes. But if you can chop it up correctly, it's great. It's good fun. Now, also as well, if you can do this on the likes of hardware or even with your PC program, maybe also your controller, and do this in real time with no no sync button or anything like that, then it proves that you are utilizing the, your equipment to, to, to its best and your best ability. And it shows that you can do this. I don't disagree about people using the sync button, but if you've got to do it, you've got to do it. But doing something like this live shows that you are working. Right, so uh, let's put that there and let's press play. All right, <clears throat> hopefully that gives you a good idea. Now again, it's about practice. When I set the other cue point, it was slightly off. So if I was doing this live, I would have made sure on my headphones that that cue point was precisely at the right point. Otherwise, it would have been a lot of work to try and get it in time continually. All right, hope this has been a help. Don't forget, if you do want to participate in me teaching you in Switzerland in March, 2013 then go and check out the link in the description have some fun and i will say practice and enjoy i do <laughs>